Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and in this episode of Practical Parallelism in C++, we're going to be looking at uh, parallel algorithms again. So in our last three videos, what we've covered is uh, the basics of Gaussian elimination, uh, a parallel version of it. So we first looked at how do we implement this using pthreads. Uh, specifically, we did a block striped uh, version, which mapped contiguous uh, chunks of our matrix to uh, different threads. And we saw that you know, this was kind of bad for work in balance because some threads were having to do way more eliminations than other threads, right? So the very early threads, you know, they were just sitting around and waiting while the later threads had much more work to do. So to solve this, we used a uh, cyclic striped uh, mapping for our rows. We basically just went around using very simple modulo um, operator. And we just said that, you know, for thread zero, it would get row zero. For thread one, it would get row one. For thread two, it would get row two. And then, you know, this would wrap around eventually. Then we looked at, okay, well, what if we do this with MPI instead of pthreads? So we did a block striped uh, mapping of our rows using MPI. So in this video, what we're going to do is a cyclic striped uh, mapping, right? So we're going to get that same benefit of balancing the work instead of uh, between threads this time between, you know, the different processes that are actually launched using MPI or the different ranks. So just as a reminder, we'll go ahead and look at the uh, the naive version first. So here, just a little bit of a refresher on MPI. So we'll go ahead and call MPI init. Uh, we'll go ahead and get our particular rank and we'll go ahead and get the entire size of the communicator or how many ranks are in the communicator. We'll calculate how many rows belong to this, uh, to, this to each of the ranks. And then we'll go ahead and distribute the work, right? So we'll go ahead and distribute our total matrix and we'll spread it out to all the other ranks inside of our communicator. And we do this with MPI scatter. Now as a reminder what MPI scatter does, it will go ahead and send, in this case, uh, in elements times num rows, which is basically just sending, uh, you know, the number of rows that we're planning on sending to everyone. This will scatter those out, um, a contiguous chunk of those rows to each of the other, um, to each of the other ranks in this communicator. And then those will all get stored in this variable right here, submatrix. And submatrix is just going to be the size of the, that, you know, n times num rows elements. So then we'll go ahead and allocate for a row. So uh, because it's Gaussian elimination, we're going to normalize a row and get a pivot equal to one. Then we'll send that row to all the other ranks to do the elimination stage. So what the way that we set it up in the naive version was, you know, first, we just start everyone else as a receiver because we know we know that you know if you're mapped to a later rank that means you'll have a later number uh, that means you, your uh, time to actually do the normalization uh, of your pivot element that won't come until you know much later in execution while the earlier ones will go directly to sender so rank zero will start at senders all the other ranks will start at as receivers until they go through all of their eliminations right so while i is equal to zero, while i is less than start row, and start row is just going to be rank times num rows. So while it waits for you know so many uh, so many eliminations, which is going to be uh, start row eliminations, uh, it's just going to be receiving and then eliminating. So in here, all we do is for all of our rows inside of this submatrix, we'll go ahead and subtract by a scaled version of the row that got sent down using MPI broadcast right here. That's this MPI bcast. And then we'll go ahead and set, you know, whatever the uh, pivot element was that was getting uh, eliminated for this row, we'll just set that equal to zero. Now on the other side of things, if we are doing uh, the normalization and sending our rows out, we'll go to this bottom section. Now in this bottom section, what we'll go ahead and do is we'll, we'll first normalize one, of, normalize one of our rows Right, by just dividing everything in the row by the pivot and then setting the pivot equal to one. So we just extract this this uh, this trivial case of you know dividing by yourself to just be assignment because we know it'll be one. Then we'll copy uh, our row into a buffer and we'll send it off using MPI broadcast. So this MPI broadcast corresponds to the MPI broadcast right here. So this is going to be the receiver side of the broadcast and this is going to be the sender side of the broadcast. And then we'll go ahead and do the uh, elimination for all the other rows that are tied uh, to this particular uh, rank. And then down here, in the case where you know we're done with our work, so we've already sent um, all of our we've already sent all of our rows. We still have to you know wait around 
so that you know we don't get a deadlock by calling this MPI broadcast here. So we'll still receive the rows that are being sent out, uh, even though we don't need to do anything with them because we've already done all of our eliminations. Uh, we still need to do this. So this is where we're, what we're trying to eliminate, this wasted work right here. Then we'll do a barrier, and then we'll just get the time and print out uh, how long it took us to compute uh, this 1024 by 1024 uh, matrix for Gaussian elimination. All right, so now let's move on to our cyclic striped version and see what's different. All right, so in this case, so let's go ahead and go at the top. It begins exactly the same. Uh, where we start seeing differences, though, uh, will be in terms of how do we uh, distribute our work. So last time we just did MPI scatter, and we did MPI scatter to send out giant chunks of uh, uh, giant chunks of our matrix, like contiguous numbers of rows of our matrix. Now in this case, we don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want to uh, stride out uh, the rows across all of the ranks. We want, again, say, you know, row zero go to rank zero, row one go to rank one, row two go to rank two, row three. Row three, go to rank three, and then maybe repeat. So row four goes to rank zero. So in order to do this, what we'll do is we'll send one row at a time uh, to each rank. But we can still use scatter to do this. So instead of having to send an individual message to each rank, what we can do is just scatter you know, one row to the entire size of the communicator. Right. So in this case, until we've sent uh, num rows, so we're sending one row at a time, but we're sending one row to each each of the other ranks inside of the communicator. So if we had, say, a uh, you know an eight by eight matrix, and we had uh, you know say maybe two ranks inside of the communicator, we would send uh, two rows at a time, one to our rank, one to another rank, uh, and then we do that repeat that four times. So until we've sent eight total uh, rows out. So that's all we're doing here with this MPI scatter. It just needs to be in a for loop because we're sending one row at a time to each rank, but that is the equivalent of um, size times, uh, uh, that's the equivalent of size rows getting sent out at a time though. So then the next thing we need to do is the actual Gaussian elimination itself. So now we've distributed our work in a, uh, it, we've distributed our work in a manner that's you know cyclic striped but we no longer had that nice property where we can have, you know, one stage that's going to be entirely for receivers and another that's entirely for senders. And the reason why is because now we don't have all of the earlier uh, rows in one rank, right? So they're going to be spread out across all of the ranks so that we have a nice balance. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll just iterate over all the rows. So we'll just have a single for loop. We'll go ahead and calculate We'll use a couple local variables that will just clean up our code, uh, make it look a little bit, make it a little bit easier to read. Um, so we'll have local row, which means what is the row in our sub matrix, right? Because our sub matrix is going to be smaller than the index in our total matrix. And then which rank? So we still need to figure out which rank does this row belong to. So if rank equals uh, which rank? So if this particular's rank is the one that's mapped to this particular row, we'll go ahead and get the pivot, and then we'll go ahead and normalize this row. Then we'll copy it in our buffer and we'll broadcast it out. So this is exactly the same as we did last time, right? The only difference being now we have to figure out um, who it belongs to, right? So we have to do this uh, rank equal to which rank uh, instead of just knowing that, you know, just based upon the index that this is going to be, uh, you know, contiguous chunk of rows that belong to this rank. Now we have to you know, do this uh, modulo operator. So then we have to go ahead and uh, eliminate it from all of the other rows in this, uh, for this particular rank. Uh, and this part stays exactly the same. And the reason why is because uh, later rows in the sub matrix that we have mapped to this particular rank, they will still correspond to, you know, later rows inside of the normal total matrix. So if we had that situation where we had two ranks in an eight by eight matrix, Right, so one rank would be mapped uh, rows um, zero, two, four, six. Right, so it would, you know, in this case, it would say eliminate. Uh, it would do the normalization for row zero, but then it would still have to eliminate it for rows two, four, and six. So that operation is going to stay exactly the same. Um, so then the next thing we have to consider is, well, what happens if uh, we're the other 
uh, were the other ranks. So were the rank that gets mapped rows uh, 1, 3, 5, and 7. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and broadcast. Um, this is the receive broadcast, right? So we've got a send broadcast from the normalized row. We have a corresponding receive broadcast. Uh, so this is how we get the row to other ranks that are waiting for um, the pivot uh, row. Now in this case, we'll go ahead and iterate over all of the rows inside of this particular submatrix, starting at whatever uh, the local row is. So we have to remember that you know, row zero is mapped to uh, submatrix uh, zero index zero, and then row one is mapped to submatrix for rank one, but it's still index zero, right? So um, we have to kind of take into account that you know index zero is going to mean you know two different things at two different ranks. So we'll go ahead and do this check right here. So we need to check if you know which rank is less than uh, our current rank which you know, this will guarantee that the row that we're currently on will, uh, uh, it's a later row, so we should eliminate something from it. And then we also can just do the simple check of J being greater than local row. So if, um, if, the, if the index that we're on is you know, already greater than the row of the other index, so in this case, it'd be, so in the case of our example where we had you know, row zero, uh, that was, you know, index zero in one rank, and you know, row three, which is index one. Well, clearly we should uh, remove, we should eliminate from, you know, that index one uh, because that is going to correspond to row three, and we've got that guarantee. And so, in this case, it'll be the exact same kind of elimination after we make sure that should we actually eliminate uh, from this particular row. So then the elimination is exactly the same. We'll go ahead and take out whatever the scaling factor is that we need, which will just be uh, the corresponding pivot element of that uh, of this later row. We'll go ahead and subtract from all the scaled values from all the other elements in this row. And because it's an elimination, instead of having to subtract some scaled number, we'll just set it equal to zero because we're no we know that we're eliminating it. Then we'll go ahead and call barrier to track when the calculations are done and we'll get a time, right? So let's go ahead and see uh, what this will get us, right? So first we'll just do, let's actually go back in and let's do a quick print. So let's do a simple um, eight by eight matrix just to show you know the functional correctness of this. So here's a simple eight by eight matrix. And down here we'll uncomment print matrix. All right, and we'll use MPI CC or MPI C++ on Gaussian elimination .cpp o Gaussian. So now we've got our executable. And remember, if we want to run an MPI application, we'll use the MPI run, right? So let's start out with just, you know, two processes, right? Right, and so here we have it, right? So we get a nice upper di di uh, diagonal uh, matrix, right? So we've eliminated all of these elements, right? And then we have, uh, uh, we've got our solution, you know, for, you know, eight equations and eight unknowns, right? So we have the final one down here. And so remember, we're not actually calculating uh, what the final result should be. We're just doing the primary, you know, elimination stage of Gaussian elimination. We're, we're eliminating all of the uh, pivots uh, and setting the diagonal equal to one, right? So that's the, uh, this is just more of the functional, uh, the functional test is to show that, you know, what it's actually doing. Now, what we really care about is how fast it's doing it. So let's go ahead and get rid of the print matrix. So we're just going to get a timeout, right? And let's actually go back in and let's set this to be a problem that's, you know, a size that we actually care about, right? So eight, an eight by eight matrix isn't going to take any time at all. So let's scale this to a 1024 by 1024 matrix. So we'll go ahead and recompile this. MPI C++, and let's go ahead and run this for a couple test cases. So the first thing we'll do is we'll run it for, let's run it for, uh, we can run it for, you know, the single case, right? So this is a case of just serial Gaussian elimination. Then we'll, uh, for two processes, then we can do it for four processes and even eight processes. Right, and so let's actually compare this against our naive implementation that did block mapping instead of cyclic stripe mapping. So we can go ahead and go to naive. We can go ahead and do uh, the same uh, compilation, right? 
And I'm pretty sure that this is going to be already scaled to 1024 by 1024, it is. So we can go ahead and go uh, do MPI run. So let's do this with uh, exact same case. So one should give us around the same time. And it does 1.18 versus 1.19. So the serial version is consistent. Then we do it for uh, two. So two will give us, you know, in our version, the cyclic stripe version, we got about 0.6 seconds or 0.61 seconds. So here we got 0.8. So about, uh, so about 0.2 seconds faster or slower rather. So let's do it with uh, four, right? So four ranks. So we got 0.5 here versus 0.37 or 0.38. And again, let's do it for eight, just so we have all of our nice, our nice comparison points. All right, so as we can see that for every single example of our cyclic stripe version, we actually did quite a bit better, right? So 0.6 seconds versus uh, 0.8 seconds, 0.37 seconds, or 0.379 seconds versus 0.501 seconds, and then 0.296 seconds versus 0.361 uh, seconds or so, right? So this is really uh, a key idea with parallel programming, which is how do you actually distribute uh, your workout um, to you know your different ranks, or in the case of p-threads, to your different threads, right? So uh, th this is something that you know, really really matters. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this episode. So this is uh, an implementation of Gaussian uh, elimination using this broadcast parallel version. The reason why it's being called broadcast is because every time we uh, we calculate a pivot row, we broadcast it to everybody. Later on, we'll see a uh, what's known as a pipeline parallel version of this, so which will be another kind of optimization that we can check the performance of that version versus our pthread and our MPI um, broadcast parallel version. But like I said, that's going to do it for this episode. You can check out all this code at github.com slash coffee before arch. So we've got you know all the different series, including C++, GPU programming with CUDA. So this is practical parallelism in C++. And we can look at parallel algorithms, MPI, cyclic stripe mapping. All right, so this is the code that we went over today. So feel free to take a look at this. Let me know if you have any questions or if you need any help with anything. And as always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.